That actually results in a situation where um, service providers will be very prompt to remove material when they receive a claim of copyright because if they take it down, they're protected from liability. If they leave it up, even if it was because they think it's okay but they're wrong, they're liable for it. So the process generally that ISPs will follow is to take material down and then to go back and let the original person know that the material was taken down, which they have to do. And then that person can say, no, that's not true, in which case they can wait for the outcome of a court case to make a decision. Okay. So um, in our case, um, Casino City, the GPWA, we've um, done the paperwork to have a, a um, agent recorded with the Copyright Office. This is a copy of the form. Um, and for people that are involved in active um, forums, it's, I think, worth doing that. It's um, not free, but it's not super expensive. I think I had to pay $135 to um, register um, it, and that covered um, all of the various business lines that we were involved um, in. We're a web host, too, so we do a lot of different things. And then you have to put up the right notices on your website, too. And here's an example of what we have in the um, notice on the um, GPWA website. Basically, have a, a section that's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act infringement notification, which says to notify if you, if you believe an infringement's occurring on the site. It gives information about where to send the notification and what's required to be included in the notification. Right. Um, in general, publishing factual information, facts can't be copyrighted. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean you can just take information from a site because if you do, you know, if there's mistakes, it's, it's actually, if you just have facts, it's okay. But when you deal with compilations of data, which are you talking about in that instance, to just take the compilations is not okay. Um, but what is okay to do as a webmaster, for example, is to look at reviews on a number of different sites and then based on those reviews to form a review of your own. So if you find three or four sites that say this is a three-year-old game, then it's okay for you to conclude it's a three-year-old game and do that. But not from just by just copying it from one site. You need to do a little bit of research yourself and, and decide what you think the facts are. Yeah. Okay, so if we want to talk about something like a picture of Superman, it's actually a little bit more complicated because I've seen some of the licenses that the game providers have, and generally um, they don't have the right to let other third parties use those. They have the right to use those images and stuff within the games themselves, um, usually. Um, and the owners of of those images generally are very restrictive with the way they let them be used. So you can't take a Spider-Man image yourself and put it on a page, not without going back to the original owner of the image. But then again, the operator that has the game comes to me and says, hey, I have a new game. Why don't you start marketing me? Help me. Right. So what you can do in that case is you can take screenshots of the game images, or you can get, or in some cases, they might give you marketing material I mean, some game providers will provide screenshots themselves for partners and marketing purposes, and in which case you can use those. And if they won't, you can take screenshots yourself. Casino City does a combination of those two things. Sometimes we get screenshots from the game's providers, but oftentimes we go in and make the screenshots ourselves because we're not able to get them from the game provider. Another common use of... of um, so because of this, for example... Um, if you find copyrighted materials of yours on the web, it's common, for example, for a webmaster to file complaints with Google about that, 
uh, basically to have the material removed. There's a website, Chilling Effects, that's, that um, um, publishes cease and desist orders that are received by webmasters. And one of the things that happens when you file a complaint with um, Google is that they react to those complaints, of course, and comply and remove offending material. They also publish all the complaints they receive on the chilling, or turn them over to the Chilling Effects website. So every complaint, every DCMA complaint that Google receives is available on this site. I'll give you an example. There's a guy, um, Steve Borey, who publishes the American Casino Guide and he has a website, americancasinoguide.com, and this is an example of a DCMA complaint he filed with Google a number of years ago where people had taken some pages from his website and reproduced them exactly. In this case, actually, the pages were, were facts. They were um, lists of casinos in particular states, but the fact that the list was taken verbatim from his site, even though it's facts, that compilation is copyrighted material, and so Google um, remove those, and this is a copy of the of the complaint off the Chilling Effects website. Um, and they summarize these. They have the image of the complaint, and they also have a, a text searchable version of the of the um, complaints there. So that's a good source if you want to see what other people have done in terms of complaints to Google. If you're a webmaster that's been victimized, to see what people have turned in and and what happened. Examples help a lot when you're trying to file complaints yourself.